Hi, this is Brother Sean with eLearning Brothers. In this uh, screencast, I'd like to show you how to make a drag and drop interaction using Adobe Captivate 7. Um, I believe that this process is very similar in Adobe Captivate 6, but I do have Adobe Captivate 7 opened up and I have a few elements on my stage. What I like to do in this drag and drop is I like to have the user be able to drag and drop these little blue labels into the appropriate um, yellow notepad. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is after I've drawn these is I am going to draw a drop target area. So I'm just going to simply use one of my smart shapes and I'm going to make it 0% transparency. Let's go ahead and just make it a color here. Then I'll take the transparency. Um, you know, I'd normally take it all the way down to zero, but just so that we can see it, I'm going to leave it at 20% just for this tutorial so that you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to make a copy of that and I'm going to make it right over here. Now these are going to be our actual drop targets um, that we'll, um, we'll drop these labels on. All right, reposition those. And actually as I look at this, I'm going to shrink my target down just so it covers just my yellow pad. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want my, these blue labels to kind of stack up on top of the yellow, the yellow pad there. So this one, same thing going to position it down and I'm actually going to rotate this one a tiny bit also just so that it has the same effect as the yellow postcard underneath it. All right now that I have my drop targets um, created down here I have my drop sources or my draggable sources right here so these will be the draggable items. We are ready to actually create the drag and drop interaction. Now the way to do it is go to the top menu and click insert and then we have this launch drag and drop interaction wizard. Adobe Captivate made it very easy to create a drag and drop. Um, first thing we're going to do is specify the draggable sources. So we can simply go and select each one of these. You can hold down shift and you can select multiple items. Um, alternatively, if you don't want to select each one individually, what you could also do is make a group type. And that's what I'm going to do for this particular one. So I'm going to grab all the labels I want to go to drop zone 1. And I'm going to select each one of those. And I put a little 1 indicator on mine just so I know which ones I want to go to option number 1. And I am going to create a new type. I'm going to say these are my draggers that will go to drop zone 1. So draggers 1. And I'm going to click OK. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the 2s. And I'm going to create another type and call these ones draggers2. Now you don't have to do it that way, but I'll show you what, what the benefit is uh, for doing that later on in this tutorial. Next thing we want to do is click next. And now we'll want to specify the drop targets. So I have a drop target right here. And I am actually going to do the exact same thing I did before on the draggers. I'm going to select a drop zone area one and I'm going to give it a special type and we're going to call it target one click OK and then I'm going to do the same thing for my target two add a new type and we're going to call it target two click OK and now we click next and now we get to specify which ones go where so grab my one goes down there and if you saw that, I just dragged one of the ones and then all the other ones automatically linked up with my option one area. That's because I kind of grouped them together and called them draggers one. So they are all tied together. So anything that I specify as draggers one from here on out will always go to this option one area. And let's do the exact same thing with the two. And you notice that both of the two draggers went to the option two area. Click finish. And my drag and drop has been created. You'll see that we see where all the indicators are going. And now we have this drag and drop um, tab opened up on the right side. And this is where we can go and set all of our customizations to how we want our drag and drop to function. We can set how many times the user can attempt it. Um, we can say, is there a failure caption? Which buttons do we want to show up? We want our undo, reset, submit button. 
Um, what do we want the interaction to do after the user has successfully dragged each to the item to the appropriate spot? So you have all these features here. You also have your reporting features if you want to include it in the quiz and how many points. So know that all those features are there and can be customized. One thing I like to do right here is I am going to say how we want each of these blue labels to display here. You have a couple different options. After the user drags that blue label to the target zone, how do we want that to actually display? There's a couple options. One is absolute, anchor, and then there's tile. The absolute option, let me go ahead and select that and I'll show you how that works. Publish it out here, do a little preview. All right, so if we drag an item over, the absolute is gonna say, it's gonna put it right wherever we drop it. So if I drop the blue label down here at the bottom, it's going to stay at the bottom. If we do anchor and we set our anchor to the center point, it's going to do just that. It's going to anchor it to the center of that target zone. No matter where I drop it, it's always going to go right to the center and they're going to stack on top of each other just like that. And then the one I really want to do is the tile. And I'm going to tile left to right. And when I click preview on that, it's going to create a stacking order, which I think it's kind of a cool effect. A cool effect for this particular type of interaction just stacks right on top of each other. And that's the one I want right here. Now, if you also go into your accept button here, you have a lot of different options here to accept what, what draggers you want to accept here. So if you want to say that the user can drag any of the items onto that drop zone, which is currently set to, is the accept all. So it'll take the incorrect and the correct options. You can also uncheck that and say, you know what, I only want to accept one answer. And when you accept that, it replaces it. So just know that there's a lot of different features and options. You can also go in and um, set up all sorts of custom um, action script code as well. Anyway, that's your basics on how to create an Adobe Captivate drag and drop interaction. I hope this has been helpful for you. Thanks a lot.